What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wake Up Network. It is your girl, Ashley, as it always is. And this is going to be your another episode of Way Up Weekly Vibes, where we gather around once a week, talk about the energy that is ahead and how we can make the most out of it. So welcome to y'all, man. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I know I'm late, but I'm up early in the morning. Like a 50 cent. Uh, the good news is, is that for my patrons, <laughs> I'm going to be dropping uh, this episode of Web Weekly Vibes, obviously today, Monday the 22nd. And I'm also going to be dropping next week's Web Weekly Vibes today on Monday the 22nd later today. So stay tuned for that. Shout out to y'all. I'm late, but I'm making it up to you. Um, and, uh, for those of you on YouTube, thank you for waiting a couple of extra hours a day, some change for this. So for y'all, I might drop way weekly vibes earlier in the weekend for you guys to make it up to you as well. We're all important here. You know what I'm saying? We all serve some type of purpose, rhyme, reason, you know, so love goes around to us all, but um, we got a lot to talk about. It's going to be a very busy week. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting day today, specifically Monday, January 22nd. I keep getting drawn to the fact that the moon is in cancer today and there's just like a a, a a supernatural vibe. I don't know if it's like, you know, hitting on the realm of like extra intuitive, like we're just more tapped in, but it's almost like the feeling of like knowing or feeling that something is going to happen, but like subconsciously being content with it. And I feel like usually or in the past, um, we we have known something was coming or something was going to happen, good, bad, that's all subjective, right? I don't really care about none of that. Um, but it's like that intuitive knowing in intuitive anticipation is really like the vibe is like having that intuitive anticipation that something is going to happen, but like being okay with whatever it is or being content or, you know what I'm saying? But like before, maybe we were anxious or maybe we were like worried or stressed or annoyed or irritated. I'm feeling like there's a um, um, dis- dismantling of, of those more like on edge, like emotions and energies. And there's a more like all-knowing energy that's kind of taking the forefront. So that energy I feel like is starting today. And that wasn't even something that I put in my notes for the energy for this week. That was something that I was like looking at the clock, looking at the time. It's fucking January 22nd, uh, uh, you know, one one twenty two seconds. I'm starting the other video that I ended up fucking stopping because I was going on a fucking rant and like <laughs> I need to calm the fuck down because it's like 9.41 a.m. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. But I mean, there's just so much. um There's just so much energy going on this week that I don't feel like we're going to stay in one energy for too long. I think we're going to kind of float around or flow around rather uh, between different energies. And with that being said, I won't even hold you. We're just going to jump right into it. Um, I talk my fucking head off. Like I said, I wasn't about to sit there and edit a video for seven minutes of me like you know, just having fucking, and it wasn't, and I would have kept it. Y'all know me. I'll be talking my ass off, but like, there's no need to keep like random thoughts like <laughs> that I'm having. Like, I mean, I guess it was a channeling, but I couldn't find the word. So it wouldn't have been like useful information to give to you. You know what I'm saying? But now that I've like sorted out my brain, we can come back on here and not waste seven minutes for no reason. <laughs> so... <laughs> fuck editing I need an editor like I need to be like Drake rich so I can like you know what I'm saying like here's my video like make it beautiful because <laughs> editing takes so much time and patience I have so much love and respect for editors for content editors for you know book editors whatever you're editing I have so much respect and and admiration for your patience and your uh, meticulousness and it's just it's a beautiful gift to be an editor uh, I am not one I am <laughs> I be trying let me tell you hmm, I be trying I be fucking with editing like it's pro tools but I have no idea what I'm doing uh, and shout out to the people that do so if you're an editor in any capacity or if you just like do shit and edit your own stuff um, shout out to you man I don't 
envy you because we shouldn't envy anyone. Uh, but I admire you so much. And <laughs> I would love to have your skill set. Okay, now. <laughs> <sighs> Anywho, um, yeah, let's just get into it. Y'all already know what it is. If you're looking for content, video thing, videos, things like that, make sure y'all check out uh, at Way Up Network on YouTube. If you're looking for extended, additional, and ad free content, you can check out at Way Up Network on Patreon. If you're looking to book a one on one session with me, WayUpNetwork.com. And if you're looking to come hang out on social media, at Way Up Network across all platforms. All of those links and more can be found down in the description box for your convenience. And if none of those strike your interest, would you please right now instead give this video a thumbs up to show your support for my time and energy. I'm about to give it all right back to you. Y'all know I do it every time. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And don't forget to throw some comments below. Share the video with your friends. Any engagement, any and every moments, time, period second of engagement uh, on these videos really helps the channel so thank y'all so much consistency does too uh, and that's what I'm working on so <laughs> let's all do our part people <laughs> uh, anywho um, we're gonna get into it so this week's title is it's better to walk alone than with those who are going the wrong direction and I'll say that again for the people in the back in the front in the middle and to the sides because we really need to grasp this concept right here right now this week um because arguably this is going to be like the theme the energy the statement the question whatever you want to call it uh really from now through the rest of winter so like next 60 ish days right spring starts march 20th slash 21st here in the northern hemisphere uh, but, uh, yeah, this is arguably going to be like the vibe. I would really say, yeah, no, I would say Aquarius and Pisces season is like, you know, back to back. Yeah. 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 So really arguably that, but it's better to walk alone. It's better to walk alone than with those who are going the wrong direction. And that's a quote by Herman Sue, but to add to this concept here. I would say that it's better to walk alone than with those who are going in the wrong direction because, for those who like to ask why, because, because there's no fulfillment in walking the wrong direction, even if it's with people. When you move in the right direction for you, for your heart, for your soul, the right people will be there to walk with you in the right direction. So a sacrifice may be, but a wise choice nonetheless. And that's going to be the vibe over the next couple of weeks. So, or a couple of months, excuse me. February, uh, January 22nd to March 20, well, second, right? <laughs> Two months. <laughs> so 21st, really, uh, but 20th, depending on, you know, times and vibes and planets and things of that nature. So spring equinox says that. Um, what day is the Lunar New Year this year? I feel like it should be coming up comes with the end of the new moon cycle. So I'm going to say, I mean, around the new moon cycle. So I'm going to say probably early February. Let's see. I have to check that real quick because I need to lunar new year. Oh, look at me. I'm a fucking genius. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Saturday, February 10th, and it ends on the 24th. Perfect. I can't wait to talk about that this year. I keep getting drawn to it, which means there's a vibe and I'll do my intuiting and my homework and things like that later. So stay tuned for that because it'll probably be like next week's episode or the week after that, actually. Anyways, uh, but speaking of this week, so there is a lot of planetary activity happening in the skies this week. 
the sun and Pluto both just moved into Aquarius. Venus is entering Capricorn this week and making some moves with Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. Uranus is going direct in Taurus. Mercury is throwing some shit up with Uranus and Mars. And finally, we have the full moon in Leo. So just speaking strictly to energy, there is a lot of it moving around. Now speaking to the specifics. So this is the week to start moving in the direction that you have chosen for yourself and your life. And if you've yet to choose a direction for yourself and your life, then welcome to the last minute club. Now is your chance to do so. While Uranus was retrograde in Taurus for the last six months-ish, it was time to work toward change by figuring out what you needed to do to make change happen. Bro, why is my internet looking like it wants to jump out of a window? I'm going to wait till this like sorts itself out. Eleven, eleven. Oh, look at that. And it sorted itself out. Okay. I wasn't going to let us go out like that because it looked like, um, it looked like it was doing weird shit. So I'm just going to go back in time. We're going to repeat that. Feel free to skip ahead if you already heard it, but it looked like it was choppy and I don't want that to reflect if you guys didn't hear what was going on. So a lot of planetary activity happening this week. The sun and Pluto both just moved into a Aquarius, Venus is entering Capricorn this week and making some moves with Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. Uranus is going direct in Taurus. Mercury is throwing some shit up with Uranus and Mars. And then finally, we have the full moon in Leo. So just speaking strictly to energy, there's a lot of it moving around this week, okay? Now, speaking to specifics, this is the week to start moving in the direction that you have chosen for yourself and your life life. And if you've yet to choose a direction for yourself and your life, then welcome to the last minute club. Now is your chance to do so. While Uranus was retrograde in Taurus for the last six months-ish, it was time to work towards change by figuring out what you needed to do to make change happen, right? Retrograde, reflect, review kind of energy. Uranus, change, Taurus, around money, your self-worth, relationships, uh, your work, your um, personal value, your your possessions, right? Things like that. Second house energy. Uh, but it was a time to see what didn't work in the past, what isn't working in the present, and what won't work in the future in those areas. It was basically a science experiment based on your entire physical life, right? Also, while Uranus was retrograde, the massive pressure to change and for change in these areas uh, was being held back like a dog in a fight. So now that Uranus is going direct in Taurus, all that pressure is getting released and showing up on your doorstep like a commission cable salesman that won't take no for an answer. So what is the message in this? Be the change you want to see. This means it's Finally, time to make the moves you know you need to make. Close the doors that you know you need to close. Walk that walk you know you've been talking. <laughs> Fucking internet is doing it again. You're ruining my sermon. Tag me to church. Um, Alex Tahari. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. If it's not, just text me and tell me how much of a dumbass I am. But Alex Tahari, I believe, uh, is how you say it. <laughs> I keep saying that because I feel bad if it's not how you say it because I really, really love her. But um, Alex is a beautiful, amazing, awesome singer um, who did a cover of that song. And I played that shit like 47 times back to back. It was beautiful. So every time I hear that song, I can only ever hear her voice. And she has one of a 
rock pop angel and it is just it is stunning so y'all check her out man alex tahari or uh, at tahari music i believe is her instagram but she is amazing and if you're listening because i know you probably are because you're always here you're always showing love you're always supporting um i can't I, I don't think i ever told you that i'm telling you now uh so that take me to church that is just that was just, it was just great. So anyways, <laughs> looks like the internet is back working. Thank, thank the Lord. Um, but the message in this, like I said, is be the change you want to see. That means it's finally time to make the moves you know you need to make. Close that door you know you need to close and walk that walk you know that you've been talking. If you do this, you won't run into any problems moving forward, just blessings, opportunities, progress, shit that feels like second chances, a leg up, like the universe is flirting with you. That type of shit is what you're heading into. And now that I'm literally 1555, I just had a fucking revelation now I get it. Remember how in the beginning I was like, I don't know why I'm like so drawn to 122 and this energy of like cancer, blah, blah, blah. 122 is five. I just seen 1555. (laughs) Change. Uranus. Change. (laughs) And, um, oh my gosh. And, um, that feeling of like, you know, something is going to happen, whether it's good or bad, right? It's good or bad based on what you choose. And again, good and bad is a perspective. But if something is happening against what you wanted to happen, it's not necessarily like the best thing ever, right? And at least not to you and your perspective. That's the message here. If you go one way, right? If you don't get up on your change game, you run into problems, you run into issues, much like you have been, or roadblocks or whatever. You you do what you need to do. You you be that change you want to see. You you move forward. You 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 like you walk that talk. You, you you know what I'm saying? All of that, all of that. Um, then you move forward into the blessings and the opportunity and the progress. So crazy ass synchronicity. So crazy. I didn't even get it till we got in here. Ain't that a bitch? Um. And it's 9.55 right now, and I can't even make this up. I'll show you. You think I'm playing? You see what I'm saying? It's fucking wild. It's insane. Can't handle it. It's too much. No such thing as a coincidence. Um, But that's what it is. That's Uranus going direct in Taurus. So make your life easier by getting your shit in order because this is your week to really begin to ease your way out of old things and into new things. So be that change. Speaking of change, (laughs) Venus is changing up her energy this week as she moves out of Sagittarius and into Capricorn. Everyone take a moment and turn to your neighbor and say, playtime is over, ho. (laughs) But seriously, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. In fact, Venus and Capricorn pairs well with Uranus going direct in Taurus because this aspect can really help you get your shit together when it comes to your career, your finances, and your relationships. But like with anything else, it's about what you choose to do with it. So while Venus is in Capricorn, ask yourself, are you really wanting and ready for real, solid, loyal, reliable, mutual, authentic connections and relationships? Ones that you can grow with and build solid long-term foundations on, with, on, whatever you want to say, right? Are you really ready for and wanting to get your finances in order to make more money, right? To really live instead of survive, right? Out of the matrix, no more paycheck to paycheck, like just kind of living free, doing your thing, right? Um, Do do you want to get your business or your career off the ground? Do you want to climb the nine to five food chain, right? Wherever you're at with it, are you ready to save, invest, hustle, flow, grind, go after what you want type shit? Are you ready to do what it takes to get what you want out of these aspects in your life? That is Venus in Capricorn, right? Venus in Capricorn is about mutual ambition. That means the people that you love, including yourself and work with in any capacity, business partners, coworkers, or friends and family, really anyone you share mutual you share mutual energy or goals with must be on the same wavelength or it's fucking bad. It's beaters. You know what I'm saying? Like 
<laughs> so yes, Venus and Capricorn can come off cold and serious, but that's because it's the most mature side of love and relationships as well as business and finances. It's the most no nonsense. I've learned my lessons. I know my worth. I've got what it takes. I know what it takes, like big boundaries type of energy. Um, this means that while Venus is in Capricorn, it's really an opportunity to make some big girl or big boy choices around who or what you can be devoted to and or devote your resources to time, energy, effort, faith, finances, physical possessions, et cetera, and or who and what you can't. Why? Because Venus in Capricorn is longevity, which means that any relationship that isn't going to work long term or any business job or project that isn't going to bring big rewards or a fatty return on your investment or anyone or anything that has been wasting your resources and or will waste your resources gets evaluated and evicted from your life now so that you can climb that ladder of success that you've set up for yourself in these areas so while venus is in capricorn which she will be on February 16th. Make sure that whatever you are doing or need to do, you make mature, practical decisions. Take accountability and responsibility for yourself, your life, and your energy, and really begin to focus all of your attention on what has been needing your attention. I'm getting like naggy, tapping on the shoulder kind of energy with that. Anything that's been like that, but you've been like avoiding, ignoring, or like trying to pretend wasn't there, delusion, all, 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 all that stuff, right? Uh, do something about it <laughs> so you can start climbing that ladder sooner rather than later, okay? Um, I also want to add, pay attention to who might be standing in the way of your ladder, even if that person is yourself, because I feel like there are people who don't want to um, climb that ladder with you, and so they're trying to stop you from climbing your ladder. So be mindful of that. Uh, I'm also feeling like, that's going to be an issue with the self too for some of you guys, like holding yourself back from climbing that ladder for whatever reason. Um, Capricorn energy has like a sovereignty type of vibe to it when it's in, when it when it's in its most raw and pure form. So this is very much about standing in your power with things and doing what you need to do to remain in that level of power in your life, right? Being control over the things you you can control, uh, not you know trying to control things that you can't. Being in flow, just kind of being in your like most real energy, like just straight up like this is me. This is what I do. This is what it is. This is what it ain't. It's like total like there is no filter it's just nothing but honest raw energy that's capricorn in its highest form that's the the sovereignty and ener sovereignty energy within you you being in total control of your life and you know kind of at peace while doing it and that's really because you know how shit works and so that's really the vibe here in order to get that uh, reciprocated back into your relationships and in your business and and so on and so forth so um Tough, to, tough but necessary choices and decisions will need to happen while Venus is in Capricorn. So just pay attention to that. Um, but last thing we're going to talk about is the full moon in Leo. And um, real quick, if y'all want to come hang out for the full moon in Leo live that we're going to be doing on Patreon later this week, then go ahead and tap that Patreon link below and to join us. And we hope to see you there. But real quick, so uh, on the... Um, excuse me, the full moon in Leo is peaking at approximately 1154 AM Central Standard Time on January 25th. And this is the perfect time to drop your ego and really embrace truth so that you can fully learn and integrate any ego-based lessons that you've been working on in order to promote natural healing in your life. And what I want to say about ego real quick is this. A lot of the times we hear ego and we think, oh, somebody with pride or somebody with, you know, arrogance or somebody with like a negative attitude or, you know, they're stubborn or they're hard headed. All of these things are characteristics and qualities of ego. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is that your ego is rooted in fear the ego wants to keep one safe, which is why energies of like defense uh, or, you know, anger or, you know, rage or fear or whatever come 
from somebody who is sitting in a lot of ego because a lot of the times people who are angry are sad. And a lot of the times people who are defensive are insecure, right? So instead of coming out and saying, hey, I'm sad, right? Because I have, they, you know, I'm, I'm going to express it as anger because I have a fear of being vulnerable, right? I don't want anyone to see me cry, to know I'm sad because that makes me weak, right? These aren't, this isn't the truth, but this is what we tell ourselves. This is what the ego tells us, right? Somewhere along the line, we have trauma, a, a fear of vulnerability because there's a trauma and there and it doesn't make us feel safe, right? So ego, brings on not so great behaviors, not so great projections of energy, um, but it's rooted in something deeper, fear, trauma, whatever, what have you. The ego wants to keep us safe and we act out of ego because we don't want to get hurt or because, you know, we don't want to seem weak or we don't want to, you know, feel that feeling or, you know, go through that thing. So, when we say sitting in ego or ego ego based lessons, yes, we can be talking about the very basic surface level Leo energy type of ego, which is you know the the you know boastful and like full of themselves and blah blah blah. These are Leo traits. They really are. Like we're not talking about Leo people. We're talking about Leo energy. But if the shoe fits, Cinderella, take it up with Jesus, not me. Um, but the, the the point of this is like, yes, it's a full moon in Leo. So yes, we're talking about all of the surface level, you know, stereotypical Leo type of ego energies, right? But on the but beneath the surface, right? Full moon beneath the surface, what is hidden behind the veil. We're talking about the deeper wounds and energies that can be tied to ego. Sometimes it can be very basic, straightforward, like look at me, I'm Leo, center of attention, blah, 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 kind of ego which can be good because in a way, because it's tied to your self-worth. So if you do love yourself and you, because Leo is big heart energy, it's also big solar plexus. So it's the center of yourself. It's literally you, right? So rightfully so that Leo energy would, uh, which is also sun energy, which is also ego energy would be tied to that. So yes, self-love, self-worth is tied to self-worth. Um, I would say self-love, uh, I would say both self love, self worth is both kind of tied to Leo energy. It's heart energy as well, but um, it can be all of those surface level. Oh, look at Leo, such a hoe. She just like wants everybody to like look at her, like whatever, right? Like what stupid shit, right? Um, but or that person is selfish, center of attention, what they want, like whatever. Um, but what I'm going to talk about and what I'm looking at with this full moon in Leo is really what's beneath the surface, the ego that isn't allowing you to like really grow and thrive in life because it is over protecting you in a very unhealthy and restrictive way. That's what we're going to be looking at. So what I'm really getting with this full moon in Leo, Leo overall is the, the energy, the message, the question of what has your ego not allowed you to see? Um, and I think that this is offering you a chance to see something, uh, whatever that may be for you, so that you can release the attachment to what, like release the attachment you have to whatever it, truth is kind of lying beneath the surface that's tied to the ego that's holding you back so that you can finally, you know, do something about it and move forward with your life. Now, this could be something about yourself. This could be, you know, something about another person or a situation that you are or were, were dealing with that has been, uh, you know, taking up a lot of your emotional energy or living way too rent free in your head, but whatever it is, there's a sense of humility tied to this full moon, which means that whatever, you know, your ego now is going to finally allow you to see, there's a big wave of humbling energy that could follow whatever unravels for you during this full moon uh, in Leo that allows you to drop your shoulders for the first time in a long time. Take a deep breath and make peace <laughs> once and for all with something that your ego was so deeply tied to, to the point that it was hindering your progress in life. So really, really beautiful energy. Now, this could come with or without some fighting or drama because, again, this is Leo energy that we're talking about. Uh, but the more you leave your ego out of it or at least listen to what your ego is saying so you can see where it's coming from, the more headway you can make during this time. And things will feel a little bit less intense if you can lean into it. So the advice 
If you've been feeling stuck, take a closer, deeper look at your ego so you can see what's really going on beneath the surface so that you can rectify it and move forward above the surface, and flow and coast and, you know, swim freely instead of like going against the current, flapping your wings, trying to drown, trying to save your life, but you're really drowning is that kind of energy. Um, just kind of let go and flow. Um, so so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into some messages this, this week. Now, I don't even really know. I don't even really know who should go first. Um, it's a toss up between Earth and Fire because there's a lot of Capricorn activity this week. There is some air, but it's just Aquarius. I don't know. 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 Uh, maybe we should just go in order. Because it's kind of a toss up. We'll just go in order. Fire, earth, air, water. I think that makes the most sense. Still, everyone has a little bit of a taste this week. But fire, earth, air water that is the order uh, of the elements in case y'all wanted to know right zodiac starts with aries fire ends with pisces <clears throat> okay yeah that feels good okay so i actually have two decks that we're going to work with today um in terms of oracle decks um i got the daily crystals uh, cards here because since this is a week about um action even if it's not like full-blown going out in the world acting and doing all these active jumping hoops things whatever um this is a week to do some things nonetheless so um i'm gonna we're gonna get some energy but then i'm gonna get well first Actually, I'm going to get you guys an action card, what to do this week, and then we'll get into some energy. Um, so using the daily crystal to get an action card. So, so daily crystals, but I also have soul's journey, which are life kind of like lesson cards, but there's also like, they also kind of come through for me as like active action kind of energy. Um, so that's really what we're going to do. We're going to look at like action focused things action focused energies um so we'll go with fire first um but we'll see we'll see what it is so okay all right card fell out so I'm gonna put it back and if it wants to come out again it will Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is going to be a really activating week for you guys. A really activating week. I'm feeling like somebody dumping a bucket of water over you. Ice bucket challenge. That's what it feels like. Somebody's dumping a bucket of water over you. It's not a drowning energy. It's more like a cooling out, a cooling off, cooling out. Some of y'all could have been mad, angry, annoyed, frustrated, all of those fiery energies uh, or fiery emotions, I should say. It doesn't have to be, though. Some of you guys, that very well could be the case. Others, do, uh, others of you guys might have just been struggling with your emotions and this like whole dumping bucket over the head kind of energy that's coming through here is like, you know, either you, you're, you're embracing 
you're embracing your emotions in kind of a chaotic way. <laughs> Erratic? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what your action card is this week with the daily with the daily crystals. Damn. Yeah, damn. That's hella funny. Okay. So your action card this week, um, Chrysoprase, uh, allow yourself to receive. So water energy is feminine energy. It is your receptive energy. Masculine energy, which is fire energy, is your active energy. So where masculine energy is giving, feminine energy would be receiving. That's why I say some of you guys had some sort of issue or have some sort of issue with emotional energy, whether that's you've struggled to really tap into your emotions, whether you, you struggled to really embrace them. Some of you guys, it's like, I, I will say uneduc uneducated, almost like a page of cups energy, like don't have the life experience or weren't taught the life I mean, weren't taught how to like deal with emotions. It's like that kind of energy. It's like um, some of you, I mean, it's coming in so many different ways. Some of you guys, this is like pain. This is trauma. This is like unhealed wounds. This is like avoiding your emotions because who wants to feel pain? This is like not knowing how to deal with emotions in a healthy or proper way. Wasn't really being shown the emotional robes. Didn't have a lot of love as a kid. Like it's these kinds of things that are here. And what's interesting, which, hold on, I'll say this, is these kinds of things that are here that haven't really allowed you to receive in the way that you want in life, whether that's receive emotion, love from other people, like true, real emotion, didn't allow you to receive true, real love, true, real emotion from people, didn't allow you to share in positive emotional experiences and connections with other people or whatever, what have you, or just feeling really distant from yourself, not really loving yourself even, or not really, you know, um, I won't say being proud of yourself. I don't know what that means. Um, but it's like that kind of energy. Before I even put fire signs down here on the screen, um, there was a card that came out and I was like, I and I said it too. I was like, I'm gonna put this card back. If it wants to come out, it will. It's your bottom of the deck energy. Celestite with soothe your soul. Celestite to me is like an angel crystal. Basically, it's like crown chakra, um, crown chakra, crown chakra, third eye kind of energy. It's like um uh, like I was talking about in the beginning uh, with that cancer, the moon being in cancer, all knowing, all seeing, like calm, peaceful, content. Um, this is a stone that like takes away anxieties. It really like lets you see things from a higher perspective. But most importantly, I think, you know, um, over anything else, at least for you right now at this time, so with Soothe Your Soul, this is like a healing energy. It's like let go of what caused the lack of flow of emotion in your life so that you can open that door to be able to receive. Some of you guys have um, so sabotaging behaviors, traits, things like that that you are working through, have been working through, will work through. Um, but it's just an energy of like not really being able to experience all that um, being in that water energy, that emotional energy, that subconscious energy, that intuitive energy, like not being able to 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 take part in all that being in that energy has to offer. And honestly, it's it's everything. I mean, truly, I mean, it's everything but the physical, right? It's 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 love, it's support, it's um it's togetherness, it's intuition, it's it's knowing, it's seeing, it's it's healing, it's peace, it's like contentment, it's joy, it's happiness. It's all the things that money truly can't buy. I think you guys have really struggled with that, but Let's pull your soul's journey card um, and see what it is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
big lessons for my fire signs around this energy. So you have failure. I understand that a mistake is only an opportunity to learn. Failure, what I say, not being proud of yourself. I don't know what that means. Some of you guys are disappointed, ashamed, guilty, whatever, um, about you know past choices or about where you are, or you know you think you failed at something, or you know you feel you're looking back at your life and feeling like there's a lot of failure type of energy around relationships. I am attracted to those people who serve my higher good. Maybe y'all are going through karmic relationship issues. Uh, you know, um, not so proud of things that have transpired or have been deeply hurt and traumatized by things that have transpired in relationships. But the the emotional issue is tied to some sort of trauma around your relationships. And I don't feel like it's just intimate, personal. I feel like it's like family, ancestral, that kind of energy because there's, there's less in energy here. There's growth here. You also have loneliness. I know that I'm never alone. Peace. I am a I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. And then last but not least, you have growth. I want to expand my consciousness and awareness. And what did I say consciousness was? It's that water energy. You see all that blue? Told you. Crown chakra, third eye chakra, right? healing energy, expanding your conscious, expanding your awareness to to not to bring growth, which brings peace which will then eliminate this energy of loneliness, feeling alone, which will, but you have to get to the root, which is around failure. You people made you feel like a failure. You are putting failure energy on yourself. Maybe people told you you were a failure, right? Parents, teachers, you'll never amount to nothing. You're a failure. You're a loser. You're a dumbass. like all of these things, right? So now you're like mentally fucked up like and I'm not laughing at that I'm laughing at like this is how the fucking world treats us and then they send us out and hope that we you know you you send us out in the world to do great things after they fuck this up like it's such a such a shitty world that we live in but this is what you guys are 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 working through are going through I feel a lot of guilt and shame behind that failure card disappointment behind that relationship card, hard, hard life, karmic lessons behind that growth card, sadness behind that loneliness card, and desperation behind that peace card. Desperate to have peace, desperate desperate for solace. This is going to be a big week for my fire signs. This feels like kind of like a um, like a breakthrough week for y'all. Um, let's just do Rider weight. We'll just do Rider weight. Um, you know what? No, I take that back. We're gonna do the. We're gonna do the Gilded Tarot Royale. Yeah, better choice. Okay. What do we have for my fire signs for this week? Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Fire signs, I think it's important that you guys know that you, you've not failed. You've come here to, to, do, to do things, right? And that growth card confirms that there is no failure while you're learning and growing and evolving and transforming. You came here to do things and this is a, and whatever you feel like you have failed at or are failing at, this is what you've come here to do. So there is no true failure. And I know a lot of fucking gurus and hoo-hoos and ha-has love to be like, failure is just a step in the ladder of six years. But really, I mean, there really is no losses. Like there really, there really isn't, you know, like everything is an opportunity. And I said, you know, on an Instagram post the other day, like, um, you know, knowledge is, is, is everything and wisdom is wealth. And you can take what you've learned through these experiences that weren't so great where there, where there are these sort of 
perceived losses. Um, and you can take what you learn, that valuable information to make sure that it never happens again. Imagine if knowledge wasn't a thing, like retention of information, like learning from your experiences, what wasn't a thing. We would just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And people do that willingly. It's the definition of what crazy is, but you guys have been through some shit <laughs> emotionally. And some of you guys, it isn't that deep. Some of you guys just don't really know like how to deal with emotion. Like, cause it's a lesson you're working through. Others of you guys is you don't know how to heal from trauma. Like you don't know how, you don't even know the first step to like sitting with your shit because you've never had to, you never done it, whatever. Like it's not a failure. It is a part of your path. A lot of you guys like I don't know. There's something here about like this loneliness. Also, I feel for some of you guys, like a codependent energy, like you don't want to be alone. So you keep getting yourself back into these karmic situations, relationships that don't even necessarily, that don't end up working out. So they just like end, they fail. They all end the same way. I almost want to say like, for you guys, it's about getting out of that cycle. Yep. Eight of cups with the hierophant. It's time to walk away. It's time to move on. It's time to move forward past these lessons. You've already learned them. There's nothing else to learn. This is about self-worth. Nine of Pentacles. This is about self-worth. This is about stop chasing. Stop chasing. Stop chasing. Stop chasing. Stop chasing people. Stop chasing relationships. Stop chasing the bag. Stop chasing. Stop chasing. Stop chasing. Allowing yourself to receive is also opening up to this energy of contentment and peace, which is the nine of pentacles. It's also independence and being content with being alone. It's a little bit of a solo journey so that you can really like bring what you want into your life. And some of you guys don't even really know what that is. Your mental is kind of all over the place. Hermit energy with the page of swords. You're just going out here, acting erratic, doing whatever and hoping for the best. And that's not while you're holding on to past shit. Eight of Cups is walking away. Some of y'all will need to get out of a relationship. Some of y'all will need to walk away from that, the, the attachment that your ego has to this pain, to this trauma, right? It's almost like whatever don't kill you, make you stronger. If you want peace, you need to go and search for it. And it's through an energy of soul searching at the Nine of Cups that you do that through the energy of the hermit. I told y'all, Hermit in the reverse is I don't want to sit with myself. Page of Swords in the reverse is I don't even know where to begin. Page of Swords in the reverse is also like a triggered energy. It's like if somebody was to bring up healing or if somebody was to bring up, you know, emotions or, you know, dealing with mental health or whatever, you would be like, no, it's bad. Get away from me. You don't talk to me about shit. Yeah, god damn. Queen of Wands with the tower in the reverse. But is you got to let go of the ego. You got to let you got to drop the ego. You got to drop the ego to really see to see you feel threatened by the thought of even like sitting alone by yourself to like deal with this. Some of you guys might even be in denial about what is causing this, meaning that you could have, you know, been in the blame game, you know, it's their fault I'm like this, or it's their fault that this happened, or, you know, y'all relationships with people have not been positive. They haven't, they just, they haven't. I want to see why they haven't. I mean, I see the queen of wands, obviously this is like, but why are we so defensive? I'm sure it's going to be like trauma, but now let's see. Let me move some of these cards around. I mean, it's a lesson, right? We see the Hierophant here, but why are we so angry? Or why are we so, maybe not even angry, but why are we so avoidant of emotion? I want to say that this is like the only thing you haven't tried because we have death in the reverse with the nine of wands, which is kind of a weird energy. Like, I mean, 
death in the reverse would be like resisting an ending. Nine of Wands is feeling like you can't – like Nine of Wands is a completion energy. It's about closing old chapters, closing old cycles. So yes, together they make sense. But in the context of why are we so angry, it's almost like you don't want to let go of it or you don't know how to let go of it, whether it's a person, whether it's trauma. Wands is energy. And it's in wands is the energy. It's your energy. First of all, it's fire energy, but it's the energy of like battle and struggle and like heaviness and like burden and responsibility. And like, is that kind of energy? It's also like defense. It's also anger. It's also like pain. It's also like war, like, you know, and the nine of wands is like, I've been through it all. I mean, look how tired this person is. I've been through everything. I've been through this. I've been through that. It's almost like wands is like, Wands is like everything that a person can go through energetically. Nine of wands is that person. Ten of wands is like is like breaking point, right? Nine of wands is I'm tired. I can't go on. But with the death card in the reverse, it's saying like that's you kind of like resisting change, endings, it's almost, I'm almost getting like attachment. Of course, the, the Eight of Cups here, Eight of Cups is my attachment card. Um, I just think it's because you don't know how to really let go of a certain narrative, a certain relationship, a certain way of being, living, doing, because you sort of built your life around this, 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 this energy. Queen of Wands in the reverse, I, like I said, is that ego energy. It's like your ego has been like over protecting you to the point where you don't even know how to like make sure, not make sure, but you don't know how to transmute. It's almost like you don't know how to integrate that part of yourself. But you don't want to feel this ener energy anymore. Fire signs, if you can't do this alone, you need to ask for help is really what I want to say. Because this really feels like, and this is no judgment, but this really feels like someone who is like really struggling to like do the one thing that needs to be done to like get to the other side of all of this. I mean, you're you're at the end of whatever this is because you're in the energy of two nines, right? Nine of Pentacles is the energy spirit is wanting you to be in, which is independent, content, you know, self-worth, like know my value, like law of attraction, like manifesting, like I am good over here. So good is coming to me over here, right? Nine of Wands, that's the energy they're wanting you to be in. Nine of Wands is like, I can't make it there. I can't get there. Like I can't let go. Eight of Cups energy, like I'm resisting endings. I'm resisting change. And I feel like a lot of it has to do, again, with the fact that you don't know how to even like go to that space because hermit energy is soul searching. It's introspection. It's getting to the root, getting to the bottom of things. It's coming out the other side wise and wizen and, you know, all of these, like, I see I'm enlightened, right? Page of swords in the reverse is like, I can't go there. I don't even know where to start. And that's why I say, if you need help, you need to ask someone instead of trying to like go about your life in this queen of wands and the reverse energy, which is like tough ego outer, you know, defense, I'm the shit, like, you know, whatever. It's also kind of like a bitter, jaded, negative energy. It's also like a bad attitude towards life, towards people, towards situations. Um, because what's behind that is this nine of wands energy. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I've been through hella shit and I don't really know where to go or what to do from here so that I can stop feeling this way. It's about learning the lesson. It's about coming out the other side as the high priestess, which is that higher knowing. It is that healed feminine energy, the one that's going to allow you to be able to receive because you see 
what everything was, what everything was about, right? Hierophant energy, lesson energy. And then from there, you can move into the energy of the page, of, um, excuse me, the Ace of Pentacles, which is new, new beginnings and new experiences. But you guys are having a hard time letting go of the past because you don't know what to grab onto or to grasp like moving forward because you've, you've never had to get to this point in your journey before where spirit was like really pushing you inward. You're struggling with going within, with really being alone, with really being independent, with really sitting with yourself, with really tapping into the root of why all of your relationships have went left, why there's a lot of failure around connection and love and supportive reciprocal type of energies in your life. Where is this sense of loneliness coming from? Why aren't you at peace. It's getting to the root of all of these things to come out on the other side so that can be healed so that you can have these new experiences. This is a major life lesson. The world is your overall card. This is a fat ass life lesson. The fat ass life lesson for you guys. And it all revolves around healing. Three of swords in the reverse. Fire signs, you can't keep walking around life unhealed in this capacity. It's holding you back from all the beautiful energies that we talked about this week, right? So Venus and Capricorn is really coming down on y'all. Y'all could have some Capricorn placements, moon, Venus, Mars, um, whatever, rising. Um, but you got to open your heart for the things that you're wanting, for the things that you're wanting to experience, for the ways that you want to stop feeling. You need to open your heart. If you want to feel loved, your heart has to be open so you can feel love. If you want to give love, reciprocate love, your heart has to be open so that you can do that. And this doesn't just have to be in a relationship capacity. This could be with strangers, friends, coworkers, clients, colleagues, um, you know, whatever. Strangers, fuck it, right? You're tired of feeling shadowy fire, ego. You want out of that. And it's a part of your path and your destiny to get out of that. And that's what you're going to be working on this week. And arguably, um, you know, like I said, the, the way this energy is kind of um, coinciding with another, I would argue the next 60 days as one big cluster of energy. But it's time to heal that. It's time to really look at that. And no one outside of you is going to be able to. Uh, um, to help you do that like you can. But if you do need help um, in terms of like a starting point or like an idea or advice, I would reach out to someone as soon as possible because um, your life will benefit. I mean, you will benefit so much. Your life will flourish so much if you can get to the root of what of what this e is, this, this ego attachment to, um, you know, these sort of, I, I really want to say like failed relationships. Um, but yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a brief intermission. I will do a timestamp. Then we'll get into fire or I mean, not fire earth. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. One second. Y'all.
All right, you guys, we are back. I'm gonna, don't worry, I'm going to do a timestamp, but we're going to get into Earth. So, <sighs> Earth. <clears throat> Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn protect your energy, your energy co. Uh, it's a card that I saw, whether it comes out, whether it doesn't, it's an energy that's obviously here. You got to protect your energy. I feel like you are, um, you either have a lot of energy starting out in the week or you're, you've been wanting to have a lot of energy. You've been asking for the energy. You've been hoping for the energy. You've been praying for the energy. Um, can can I just have the energy just to do all these things? Can I have the energy to get this done? Can I get caught up? Can I, you know, make some shit happen? Like that's kind of the energy that's coming through. Um, that's kind of the energy that's coming through. Can, do I have, can I get the energy to do all of these things? Can I have the energy to make some shit happen or whatever? Um, and I don't want to say that people are going to try to stop you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But um, there is a need to like really, how do I say this? Like your hedge of protection this week um, in terms of protecting your energy um, is you focusing on what you need to focus on. And through that focus, you will derive the energy to do what it is you need to do. If you lose your focus, if you focus on other shit, if you get distracted, if you, you know, go tit for tat with your neighbor, if you fight with your boyfriend, if you, you know, if you tap into any of those kind of like distracting, distracted energies that is how your hedge of protection against, you know, for your energy uh, will be infiltrated. And so kind of a weird, me well, I don't want to say not like, um, 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 it's not a weird message, right? But it is one that is saying like your focus, yes, to all of what you're asking for, right? But your focus needs to be on you, on yourself, on what it is that you're trying to do. And you will be able to accomplish a lot. So a couple energies coming through as far as your action cards this week. So you have appetite, get out of your comfort zone. To me, this is saying whatever you've been wanting to do, but either either have, you know, been too afraid of doing, you've been holding yourself back from doing, you feel like you didn't have enough energy from doing, you feel like you're too lazy, you don't want to get rejected, whatever. Now is your time to put yourself out there and to do that. This is a fantastic week to do whatever that is. You also have pink opal with be kind to yourself. So no more negative self-talk. No more being hard on yourself because you couldn't do 75 things at once today, right? Like do what you can and make sure you're scheduling yourself in, in the process. Ocean Jasper, schedule yourself in. So you see how I'm talking about uh, your energy for this week is really around like protecting your energy, which is focusing on yourself, which is like, you know, you have all these things that you want to do. So like focus on doing them. Like it's that kind of energy. I want to say that maybe you guys have been over giving or people pleasing or, you know, um, I want to say avoiding whether consciously or subconsciously avoiding your own needs, wants, desires, whatever, and focusing on, you know, other people or other things. Like there's just an energy of like not focusing on the self, not focusing on what you need to do, your tasks, what you want to do, uh, things that you want to accomplish and complete because there's a, there's a focus. I keep getting the other people, other people, other people. Like I see you like in a small circular bubble, like it's so small. And then there's just like crowds of people outside of you. Now, realistically, whether there are crowds of people outside of you trying to penetrate your energy fields or not, there is this energy of like people, 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 people. Like I want to scream, like whether it's kids, whether it's people you live with, whether it's work, whether it's coworkers, whether it's family or whether it's anybody at all. It, it could just be the 87 voices in your head that are telling you that you need to do 142 things by three o'clock or you're a piece of shit, right? Whatever it is. 
uh, whoever it is, it's this energy of pressure, 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 whether it's be, whether it's self-imposed or whether it's being imposed outside of you and you are allowing it to happen or you have allowed it to happen. I want to say you don't need to always be there for people. You don't need to always do things for people and show up for people and like, you know, take on their burdens and their responsibilities on top of your shit. Cause it's almost like when you go out of your way to do for other people or when you co-sign doing things that you don't necessarily really want to say yes to, it's almost like you're, you're, every time you do that, you're compromising your immune system in a way, right? Your defense system, your energetic supply. Um, and that has to change. It's almost like don't do anything else for anyone else until you do everything you need to do for you first is really the energy with that. But uh, so doing all of those things, getting out of your comfort zone, doing comfort zone, doing things that you guys have been wanting to do, uh, but you haven't for whatever reason, uh, being kind to yourself in the process, scheduling yourself in TLC, right? Self-love, all of those great things, but also like, um, you know, self-love and self-care is doing the things that you want to do. So, uh, making progress on, you know, your business or a project you're working on, or, you know, um, uh, you know, a hobby that you've been wanting to like get back into whatever, right. It's that kind of energy, uh, doing things that you enjoy this week, doing things that are going to make you feel good at the end of the day and not playing in <clears throat> to any distractions or things like that. But, um, let's see. Nice. Great. Okay. Beautiful. Fantastic. Let me get a sip and then we'll um, get back into it. Okay. All right. So uh, energies you're going to be working on this week, denial. I acknowledge my fear, but I replace it with insight and awareness. And then you literally have fear. <laughs> I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. So literally denial with fear. And then you have change because this is what is needing to change this week, right? I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. And then bottom of the deck, you have the energy of pride. I love myself and I see myself in every one. So you have denial, fear, change with pride at the bottom of the deck. So a lot of you guys could be, um, could be, or have had issues with, um, I don't want to say issues, imbalances with, um, like, like avoiding yourself or avoiding what needs to be done or avoiding, you know, making choices or, uh, you know, making changes in your life necessary changes within your life by like overgiving, overdoing, people pleasing. Like it's almost like doing more outside of you. Like, how do I say this? Like doing you, you have been feeling like if you do more outside of you, it will comp, Compensates for whatever inside of you you are avoiding or not wanting to see or not wanting to deal with. This could be emotionally, this could be mentally, this could be physically, this could be uh, whatever. Right? It almost feels like your 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 comp your over your over giving. Some of you be beyond your means. Some of you for no fucking reason. Some of you for you know whatever. Um, in compensation for something you feel like you can't control or something something impending that you feel is like nagging or needing your attention i don't i don't the messages are so fucking weird today um hmm the messages are so weird today i feel like bottom line is I feel like you do shit outside of yourself to avoid yourself. Like you do things outside of you to avoid doing what you need to do inside of you. I think you got to, I really think you need to be honest with yourself. 
but then again, I feel like you are being honest with yourself because you know what you're doing. You're doing this on purpose. <laughs> Whether it's conscious or subconscious, you're doing this on purpose. That's why it's so like confusing. But it's not even really, but it's not even really confusing. It's just like a catch-22. It's like you are, or irony, really, right? It's like what needs to change is I feel inside of you, it's a fear. You have some sort of fear about stepping outside of your comfort zone, right? There's some fear that's keeping you in a comfortable place that is that needs to change because it's not good for whatever reason, right? Whether you're in a state of denial within yourself about something going on outside of you, like a relationship that needs to end, a job you need to quit, you know, an impending somebody, you know, how do I like like uh, an impending event that you don't know which way it's going to go, like a conversation that you need to have, you know, a choice that you need to make, you know, an investment that you need to pull out of, like whatever it is, there's, you're, you're wanting to play it small. You're wanting to stay in a comfortable place that isn't allowing you to grow, right? With change, I understand that nothing can grow or evolve without movement. You have to move. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to do something about this fear. But instead of doing something about this fear, you move into the energy of denial. Pretend like you don't need to do anything. Pretend like you don't need to grow, expand, move, change, whatever. And you, 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 you stay small, but then you turn around and beat yourself up about it because you're, you know, you're trying to stay small. And then it's kind of just this repetitive cycle of nothing happening. Right. And that's what it is. And again, the reasons why you guys are doing this or however this is playing out for you will all be different, but that's the gist of this. It's like a cycle of like, It's, it's a cycle of like, I know my worth. I know I'm better than this. I know I deserve the world to like not allowing yourself to have the world and then beating yourself up because you didn't allow yourself to have the world. Now you're worthless, right? Like I'm worth everything, but then don't make the change to get everything. So now you're worthless. It's like that kind of energy. That is a scary cycle to be in because you could stay in that cycle your entire life and do nothing and be 80 on your deathbed like I wish I would have, right? And these are the things that people don't want to talk about, but we need to talk about them so that they don't happen, right? Stop filling other people's cups when yours is empty because you are depriving yourself of the water that you could be drinking if you stepped outside your comfort zone to get it. You are dying of thirst and willing to pour into everyone and everything outside of you instead of filling your own cup. Decide whether you're really worth it or not, spoiler alert or signs, you are worth it. And stick with that and use that as fuel to step outside of your comfort zone to break this energy of denial, to get out of this fear, to promote change, to show up for you. And... go on to live your best life. <laughs> really, right? That's why pride is here. It's like pick a side, you know? I love myself, right? Type of energy. <laughs> yeah, the fool. Zero energy, ground point energy, clean slate energy, new beginning energy. Also energy of what? Taking risks. Step outside, stepping outside of your comfort zone, jumping off a cliff that you don't know where it's going to land, where it's going to lead. Your denial is that something needs your the denial energy is knowing that something needs to change, that you need to have a brand new clean slate and get out of this scarcity energy. Four of Pentacles. This is like uh, this is I have to hold to hold on to what I got. Some of y'all are you are afraid to like 
and I don't want to like go to extremes, but full energy is pretty extreme. It's again, taking risks. Some of you guys are afraid to like put yourself out there in like the public eye. Some of y'all want to be famous, but like don't want to be seen. <laughs> that came up for someone. I can't remember who, uh, I think it came up in the, um, month ahead videos, um, for January. I can't remember who it came up for, but it's that energy. Um, want to be famous, but like, don't want to be seen. Um, there's that kind of energy coming through. There is, uh, an energy of like, um, want to be, um, a business owner, but like, don't want to quit your job or like, don't want to invest or like, don't want to do the work. Like there's something about not feeling worthy to take the risk, to go after all that you deserve. But I think that's just fear getting to you, a fear of failure that you're trying to cover up denial as like, what if it doesn't work out? Like it's that kind of energy, but it's scarcity. The fear is scarcity. It's not having, it's not having, it's like, I got to hold on to what I got. I can't invest it. I can't give it. I can't, you know, cause you know, what if, what if, right? Mm -hmm. So over denial, I'm going to show it to you like this over denial. We have the fool, right? You're denying that something needs to change, that you need to take a risk, that you need to get out of your comfort zone, that you need to put yourself out there, that you need to transform, that you need to change. Over fear, we have the four of pentacles. This is scarcity energy. This is I have to hold on to what I got because if I don't, uh, what if I don't have enough, right? This is, a, this is a fear of being broke, of being hurt, of being, you know, like it's a fear of not having scarcity over change. Okay. <laughs> over change. We have the whole entire deck <laughs> that just <laughs> fell out everywhere. There's a lot that, I mean, honestly, there's going to be a lot that comes out for change because it's going to be different for all of you, but let's just see kind of grand scheme. <sighs> what is this? I couldn't make this up even if I wanted to. <laughs> Two of Wands in the reverse. Two of Wands is my comfort zone card. This is about choosing a path, uh, you know, um, deciding whether you're going to stay in your comfort zone or go down a different path, a new path, one that you don't really know what's down there, but seems promising, right? Kind of energy. Two of Wands is coming out of your comfort zone. You have to move. You have to walk down that path, right? Change. Uh, I understand nothing can grow or evolve without movement. Two of Wands in the reverse is that movement, walking down that path. Uh, for a lot of you guys, this is going to be a very healing path. Interesting how healing came in twice um, for fire signs and for you, earth signs. Full moon in Leo, it, do it does have a healing energy to it. There is healing and there is a learning of big lessons. Um, but for you, um, some of you guys, this is two, two of wands, ace of cups, two of wands, ace of pentacles. Um, yeah, nice. Okay. Um, so over that, we have the ace of cups in the reverse and the ace of pentacles. Choosing you, choosing your path leads you to new and better opportunities. Interesting. Fire Science also had ace of pentacles as kind of um, is their outcome there overall. But it's almost like um, don't let life pass you by is really the message I'm getting with this energy. Don't let life pass you by. Don't waste your whole life uh, on other people and other things because you feel like it, it's safe and it's going to bring you um, some sort of comfort or, you know, it's going to allow you to, you know, have and it's, you know, it's, you know, it's just, it's scarcity playing it small in this case for you or signs is nothing more than just a scarcity mindset you need to get out of to, to be able to erase the fear, to be able to take that risk. You got to get out of denial. You have to understand that change has to happen in your life. And if you stay around people or situations that are smaller than the, than as big as your dreams are, you're going to be really disappointed and be living your life with regret. And nobody wants to live that way. And people always say, oh no, live without regrets. And you know, don't feel regret and regret is this and regret is that. But the reality is, is that we're human and we feel regret. Like <laughs> we feel regret. Like, damn, I wish I wouldn't have done that shit. Damn, I wish I would have did this shit. Like this week is, is, is setting you up so that you don't 
so that you don't live a life like that. It's setting you up so that you live a life that is totally aligned and totally perfect. Overall, we have the magician, which is manifestation, you having all that you need to create whatever it is that you want. And in this case, with the two of cups, it's experiences that are truly aligned to your soul and truly are fulfilling and reciprocal and loving and beautiful. Remember how we talked about earlier about stop emptying, your cup is empty, you're thirsty, all of these things. Two of cups is people who pour back into you. People is situations that pour back into you. It's it's reciprocity. Yes, it's soulmates. Yes, it's you know solid love relationships and connections, which is absolutely on the table, especially with the magician, which is I can create anything. I can make anything happen for myself, for my life, whatever, what have you, with a little faith, consistency, and hard work. Overall, we have eight of pentacles with the nine of pentacles under that. Beautiful energy, more solo energy, more self-worth energy. We had this in, in fire signs reading as well. But this really is the energy of like, I can I, I can align myself to way better than what the fuck I got over here in the Four of Pentacles, which I hate to say it, y'all, is nothing. Four of Pentacles is nada. It's like, it's bare minimum. It's like $2 in my bank account when I can have $2 million. Like, and, I'm, and if you have $2 in your bank account, like that's not, I'm not, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't fucking get it to it. Like, but it's that kind of energy. It's like settling for $2 when the universe is saying like you're worth $2 million and you could like have $2 million. But I think that you have to get out of this denial. Really understand that you can have $2 million. You are worth $2 million. And you don't have to settle for $2 because it's what is right in front of you. Uh, with faith, consistency, and hard work. A little bit of solo energy as well. Like really on your law of attraction manifestation shit. Like really, really on your shit. Uh, you'll be here at this two of cups in no time, but you have to get out of your comfort zone in order to get it. To get something you never had, you got to do something you've never done. That's your vibe this week. Our signs are right over the next 60 days, really. Like I said, this energy is going to run concurrent. So that's your vibe. Literally next 60 days is, is kind of probably going to be your overall 122, 22 when I looked at the time, but now we're going to move on to air signs. <laughs> So we're going to move on to air. Let me get a little stippy stamp. Okay. All right. Uh, air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. So starting with your... Seeing someone in a business suit at a desk telling someone else to bring them coffee while they talk on the phone. Are y'all bossing up this week? Are you are you no longer I can, damn? I'm getting this energy of like no longer laying down and letting life do you. You're about to get up and do life. <clears throat> and I fuck with that. And I fuck with that. Wow. I fuck with that. Getting tired of being the, the runner of coffee? Is that what it is? Don't want to run coffee no more? You want motherfuckers to run you? Yo, shit, air signs. Let's get y'all some action energy for this week from the Daily Crystal Oracle. Sorry if that was loud in your ear, but you got to think about it like this. That was the sound of a plane taking off because you are fucking getting on board today. You have Moonstone with Live Your Purpose. Moonstone with Live Your Purpose. And Garnet ignites your passion. 
Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Bottom of the deck, you have sunstone. Take pleasure in the things you do. What the fuck? What the hell? Where did y'all come from? Am I talking to a group of new air signs? <laughs> or did my air signs who have been here finally take that stick out their ass and really do it moving because every single one of these energies that's here is pure fucking alignment to your path, to your purpose, to what you want to do with your life, to just kicking ass and taking names. Like, I mean, this is taking control. This is taking control. This is this is what I want to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm going to do. I mean, I don't know what to... I mean, psh, I mean honestly, y'all, this could be um, in different areas of your life, right? This could be, you know, in relationships. This could be in work, in love, in life. I'm really feeling work for a lot of you. I'm going to be honest. But for others of you, I'm feeling a strong sense of like um, taking complete control of my life, only doing the things that I want to do, only saying yes to the things that feel right to me, only entertaining people that, you know, bring me good vibes, good energy. It's really taking control of your life in a massive capacity. It's like not rushing. It's slowing down. It's being present. It's tasting, savoring every moment in time. Like this is being in a really good energy. I mean, living your purpose, igniting your passions, fucking taking pleasure in the things that you do. This is joy. This is happiness. This is feeling something good every day, no matter what is going on. This is fantastic energy. And I hope that this is energy that you guys are moving into <laughs> and not being fucking forced by the universe to move into. I honestly feel like it's you though. You kind of getting tired of like the same old, same old and recognizing what I just had to tell earth signs, which is uh, basically nothing changes if nothing changes. Right. Um, but let's, I mean, damn, let's pull. I don't even know what to say. I mean, this is just so, I mean, it's just, it's straightforward, yes, but it's such a powerful message. Like, what else do you say? You know what I mean? Like, live your purpose, ignite your passion, like, take pleasure in what you do. Like, this is just everything that is like, it's the makings of a of a peaceful life. But let's pull your let's pull your soul's journey card and see like what the vibe is. What I say. Just all good all day. Look at that beautiful energy. Peace. I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. What did I tell you? This is like really being tuned in, tapped in, just in a good space, in a good place, taking full control over your life like like I said doing what you want to do and not doing what you don't not feeling obligated tied down to people in situations just out here living life doing you and doing what you love and aligning to your purpose and enjoying the small things and no longer overthinking everything and stressing out and being worried you're just kind of flowing and being present and just in such a beautiful amazing space oh my god look at the bottom of the deck happiness. I am aware that being happy means that I'm on the right path. Air signs. This is chef's kiss energy. Um, you also had relationships come out. Interesting. Fire signs also had this energy. So maybe you have some fire in your chart, Aries, Leo, Sag. But I am attracted to those people who serve my higher good. What did I tell you? Saying yes to the things that you want to say yes to. Saying no to the things that you don't want to. Not only being around people that bring you good vibes. Discerning who those people are. Being real. Being honest about who those people are. It's almost like, you know, look scanning your life like, 
seeing who is like for you, who isn't. Think when you think of somebody, when you think of somebody in a suit sitting at a desk saying, go give me my coffee, whatever, you probably instantly have like a negative connotation about them because of the way that the movies show you that kind of energy is an arrogant snob, loser person, whatever, who like bullies and bosses people around. But let's just, let's, let's take out that kind of stereotype for a second and really depict the energy that is behind that. That is someone who is confident, who is in a a position of power, a higher position, regardless of how they're using it. Again, we're not going to get into the semantics. We're just going to look at the energy. We're not going to get into Steve, the asshole was running Susan to go get coffee for her. We're not going to look at it like that. We're going to look at it like this for one second, just to like drive this point home for you guys, right? You guys are, um, this person at the desk is confident. They are casual and relaxed, even though they're in a suit, their feet are on the desk, they're swinging around, they're talking on the phone because they are con- they are, they they are content with what they're doing with their work. They know they're in a good position, they're in control, they're in a you know what I'm saying they're in a good space. They're they're at peace. They're like you know what I'm saying they're aligned to what they're doing. They're in tune with what they're doing. They're tapped into what they're doing. But they're in a position of power. They're in a good space. They're in a good place within themselves to be able to ex- exert that kind of powerful confidence energy outside of themselves. And again, how they use it and how they do it, that's, it's subject to, you know, perspective. But the idea is that you're aligned to what it is that you're doing. You're feeling in control of your life. You're feeling confident. You're feeling like you're in a good space. And when with that, you're at peace. You also have the energy of service. I feel good when I can help others. That's why I said we wasn't going to talk about, you know, Steve being at the chair running Susan for, for coffee or whatever because service energy is Virgo energy. And it's here because you guys are still keeping your heart about you is what I'm hearing. You, you are keeping your heart about you and whatever it is that you're doing because you, you I don't want to say you lost your heart, but you were you are separated from your heart for a while. Guys could have been going through some healing, um, you know, uh, working through some trauma, um, you know, sadness, right? Betrayal, deception, all of the things, um, particularly around, like I said, relationships. Y'all had this card here, um, particularly around relationships. So it could be lots of lessons around relationships, um, you know, uh, depression, upset, things that would have kept you either in a place of anxiety, overthinking, questioning, uncertainty, bitterness, jaded kind of energies throughout life, um, you know, because of like, you know, salt, like, like not so great relationships kind of things or, you know, things like that, uh, relationships distracting you from your purpose, I'm hearing, or relationships taking you out of a place of peace is what I'm hearing. Um, but you're working through that now. You're you're moving past that. You're fo- you're putting that focus on yourself. You're looking at life like I need to live my purpose. I'm tired of the way that this shit has been. I'm sick of this relationship. I'm tired of these fake ass friends. Like I'm sick of these fake ass family members. I'm sick of these, you know, d- stupid jobs. Whatever it is, you're like I am in control. I'm confident. I'm moving towards my purpose. I'm I'm getting passionate about, you know, uh the things that, you know, mean something to me. I'm taking joy and pleasure in what I'm doing. I'm at peace. None of that shit bothers me anymore. You know, I feel good when, you know, I'm out in the world doing my thing because whatever it is that y'all are doing in a way you're servicing people, whether that's directly running coffee uh, or whether that's doing whatever Steve does behind the desk on the phone. It's an energy of whatever it is you're doing is going to reach people, is going to touch people in some way, whether that's sharing your testimony, whether that is, you know, um, you know, you have a career where you help people in some form or fashion or uh, or, you know, whether you just um, go out into the world and just, you know, be you and do your thing and shed your light and spread your love. That's also helping people. There's there's just it's like it's almost like you're helping the world by being the best version of you, honestly. And in whichever way you end up reaching people, it's like keeping your heart about you through all that you've been through is a part of your purpose. You need to keep that heart about you. You need to keep that passion about you. You need to keep that love and that light energy about you that you naturally have because I feel like you've let relationships 
and, you know, situation, not so great situations that have happened in said relationships kind of, you know, take you off your path. But in overcoming that, you're keeping your heart about you, which is keeping you in a place of peace and happiness and putting you in a position to go out into the world and share that with others in a way that's going to influence them. And again, that's that can come in a lot of forms and fashions. Again, just showing up in the world, you know, being you, right place, right time at a coffee shop, help a stranger, uh, you know, with your love, with your light, or just making the world a better place by being you. Because uh, you guys have something really special about your energy that needs to kind of be out there. And I feel like it's been being kind of stifled by, you know, giving your light to the wrong people or, you know, just kind of dealing with people that didn't appreciate your light or whatever, what have you. But instead, you're taking that light and, and putting it out into the world, whether in job, business, career, personal, love, relationships, whatever, and giving your light back to the right people and not being, you know, bogged down by people that don't see your light or betray your light. You're like, I don't even give a fuck. I won't be around you. I don't have time for that. You know, I'm trying to be happy. I'm at peace. I'm in the present moment. I'm excited about what I'm doing. I'm aligning to my purpose and I don't give a fuck about none of that other shit and so on and so forth. And yep. And that's what you're moving to. This is a huge milestone for you, air signs. You have the four of wands. This is stability. This is security. Uh, this is happiness. This is celebration. Um, but this is a milestone of success. Nonetheless, it is a four of wands. So it's, it, I don't want to say it's not a big success, but it's the first step, uh, truly towards peace, towards happiness, towards, you know, um, feeling better about yourself, about your life, towards the right relationships, towards the right people. It's the first step in that direction. It's the first mile of milestone of success in that capacity. You finally are seeing things clear, ace of swords, and rep. I want to say recognizing what you have to do to get, get to where you want to be, and you're good with that. You you are good with that. Yes. Mm, see? Healing. Three of swords in the reverse. This kind of feels natural. This feels natural as a result. This is happening as a result of what you have already been working on prior to the, this week. This healing that's coming in, this clarity that's coming in, this sort of like um, a milestone of success that you're reaching, this feels like a result uh, of the work that you've already been doing, which is telling me that, yes, you're going to start feeling more happy and more at peace and more excited about your passion and, I mean, more more passionate and excited about your path, your, per your path and your purpose, um, but there is still some work to go. It doesn't mean um, that, you know, um, that's anything to be disappointed with. I think it's an expectation that spirit is kind of like um, setting for you that there is still some work to be done, things that you need to do um, to fully step into all of this energy. Um, and I, I think they're only saying that because they, they don't want you to, um, when you're in transition, when you're in progress, right? When you are working towards something, we can easily get discouraged on days that we don't feel so passionate or we don't feel so motivated. And I think that spirit is wanting to tell you that, yes, this is your first step in the right direction towards that energy. This is a milestone. You're completing it. Everything to be celebrated for a wand's energy, right? Um, but there is still some work to go. So make sure you keep up that energy. Make sure you keep up that momentum is really the message. Yeah, look at this. Perfect. Because you're at a page of pentacles and a page has some work to do, right? Page is what takes, the page is what takes the ace, right? The knight is what takes the eight and the king is what contemplates you know, what next with the, that ace energy, but a page is new experiences. It's open. It's ready to go. It's being in your, in your perfect energy, uh, queen of swords, right? Being in your, the most balanced form of yourself, um, total clarity, um, just knowledge, wisdom, knowing ready to go, ready to do, um, page of pentacles is that eager energy, ready to go, ready to do, but in the right energy in the right mindset now, uh, you know, and just kind of ready I want to say ready to take on the world, uh, really ready to take on the world, ready, ready to get out there. Page of Pentacles confirms though that there is more work to do. So yes, this is the first stage, something to get excited about, but don't lose that momentum because it's about to be time to really get to work. I think you guys are going to start getting a lot more busier. 
you're not going to be unhappy for long is what I'm hearing. There is happiness ahead. Yeah. See what I say in transition. Six of Swords energy is your overall. You guys are moving towards emperorhood. You're moving. What I say, you're moving towards being confident. Emperor with the strength card. You're moving towards having that full control over your life, living in your purpose, highest form of yourself. You're, you're gaining that confidence. You're gaining that strength to move on, to move forward past all of the lessons that you've learned. You're moving right into emperor strength. This is all fire energy. This is Aries. This is Leo. This is you in the Six of Swords energy with all the knowledge and the wisdom and the clarity that you have gained. Where's my queen? of swords with all the knowledge the clarity that you have gained you're taking your sort of knowledge and wisdom and you're using it to really live and fulfill your purpose and really um you know um um go through with what you've always wanted to do but there was some but that block was just there. You're, you're removing that block because you're healing. This is a milestone. This is a milestone of healing. This is you moving forward towards happier times, happier energies, uh, completing off with the sun here, which is beautiful because that goes right in line with your happiness energy. Chariot is movement towards that uh, on a soul level because you have completed this sort of phase of the journey that you've been on. But um, overall, air signs, I really feel like the message is to keep going. You're on the right track. You've completed a huge milestone. I would say the karma portion of whatever you were going through, um, that's kind of over and done. The worst is behind you. The pain is, it's, it's gone. It's, you know, even if you still have to make some decisions, I don't feel like there's a lot of pain behind it because I feel like you've already come to terms with it, uh, with what something or whatever is, but you're, you're, you're in the right, you're moving in the right direction. Stop for a minute, celebrate this week for how far you've come and get ready to work because it's about to get really busy for you guys. So uh, turn up for my air signs. We're going to take one more quick brief intermission before I get into water. Um, so I will do a timestamp and um, I will be right back. All right, y'all, TMI, um, but I've been increasing my water uh, intake. <laughs> I feel like in winter we forget to like hella stay hydrated. So I've been slacking on my mac when it comes to my water intake. And so I've been increasing it. And so like that means increased trips to La Baño. So we're going to get into it <laughs> for my <laughs> water signs. Uh. Speaking of water, right? Ooh. Ah, okay. All right. Um, excuse you, ma'am. Oh, my neck, my back. Okay.
don't know where my yawny fest is coming from here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So water signs cancer scorpio pisces Ooh. cancer scorpio pisces Can all right <laughs> My cat, like, always comes over um, when I do water signs. <laughs> I don't know. She was chilling until I said water, and then she was like, let's go create havoc. Okay, so y'all have a couple of different action cards this week, too, which right off the bat kind of contradict each other, which I think is hilarious. But you have hematite with ground yourself and bloodstone with get up and get moving. We could laugh and say, yes, they contradict each other. One says sit, one says stand. Right. Um, but in this case, I feel like this is like taking a pause to like collect yourself before you go and make a move because you do have lapis lazuli, which is make a decision. And this is throat chakra energy. So something you need to say, something you need to be honest with yourself about something that you need to be honest with someone else about a conversation that you need to have with yourself or someone else, whatever, what have you, but either way needs to happen. But I think there's a lot of chaos around whatever this is. And it feels like internal chaos, something that you are uh, worried about by speaking your truth, by saying what you need to say, by being honest, whatever. Um, and I think it is around what the outcome is going to be if you do. Because at the bottom of the deck, you have smoky quartz with let it go. So something that needs to be let go of, a decision that needs to be made, grounding yourself that needs to happen, and getting up and get moving that needs to happen. So to me, if I read this all together, this is saying, take a step back, get your mind right, get up, make that decision, get moving, let it go, move forward, right? Type of energy is what I would say. Now, Obviously, this is going to be different for all of you guys. So, I mean, fucking if ground yourself is one thing that you know you need to do, if get up and get moving is one thing you know you need to do, if making a decision is what sh is one thing you know you need to do, or letting something go is one thing you need to do, then take it all individually. But if I'm, like I said, if I'm reading this as a whole, this is the energy of there's some sort of chaos going on, something that is just, it feels like chaos to me. You do have peace at the bottom of the deck. I am a loving, I'm, I'm a being of love and I release on negative energy. Um, but there is an energy of like chaos here. Um, and it's like, you got to do something about it, but, and, but, but like a message to not get swept up in the chaos, a message to like stop for a second. Yeah. A message to like stop for a second clear your mind, get your mind right, then make the decision, then say what you need to say, then do what you need to do. I'm wondering if spirit is saying like, um, like don't anticipate the worst is the first thing that's coming through. Um, and don't be afraid to do it the right way. Don't be afraid to do it the right way. Let's see. It's almost like you feel like you have to do, do something like in a in a not so integrity driven way in order to get the results that you're looking for. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think so because we have empathy here at the bottom of the deck, but um. Okay. So we have fear. I realize that I am testing my resolve to live in the energy of love. There's a fear of letting go here. We have health. I will honor my physical vessel that enriches my soul. 
That's with Get Up and Get Moving. We have acceptance. I'm learning to accept the things that I cannot change. And then we have empathy. I am open to seeing both sides of a situation. So something you guys are holding on to, number one, that needs to be released it could be physically outside of you, um, but it could be internally. Again, take this as it resonates for you. But again, but for me, this is about making a decision to release something that is having a significant impact on our health, physical, mental, emotional, something you guys are stressing about, something that you're worrying about, some sort of emotional baggage that you're holding on to, some sort of grudge, some sort of resentment that you're holding on to, something that's deeply rooted in your, I cannot fucking forgive this, let this go, look past this, energy, um, getting a lot, getting 12th house Pisces with that. Um, and also the grudge holding of, uh, Scorpio there and the vengeance of cancer. It's really that kind of energy. It's like, I want to, I want to, this is going to sound like maybe fucked up, but it's like, none of that matters is really the energy that's coming through here. If it's affecting your health, if it's bringing you anxiety, if it's fucking up your ability to like live and breathe and do and enjoy life, accept that it happened and then move away from it. First card out, you have the chariot. Exactly. Accept what happened and move away from it. Um, empathy is needed here. Because it's like whatever has happened or has to happen in order you in order for you to like get yourself into a better mental, physical, emotional health state. It's like something needs to be done. And the fear is around releasing this or saying what needs to be said or being honest about the situation in some way, form, or fashion. And if there's empathy involved, that means you are able to see both sides of a situation, why something happened or why something needs to happen and part ways with it on some no hard feelings, water under the bridge type of shit. This could be a disagreement you've had with someone. This could be a relationship that needs to end. This could be a job situation that's kind of like been kind of crazy and like needs to be like, you know, balanced out or whatever. Um, or this could just be an energy within you that you're kind that you've not yet worked through. But for some of you guys, a hundred percent, there's fear around a conversation that needs to, to be had about letting something or someone go. Others of you guys, this is fear around a conversation over something that has already happened and this the fear is over having the conversation of something like of of reconciliation like of to rectify something um others of you guys this is um still kind of just holding on to shit from the past really that is that I feel like is kind of getting in your way like can't accept an ending can't accept something has happened can't accept that something is over it's like that kind of energy that is like really blocking your path it's also putting anxiety into your body that you don't necessarily need to experience I know that sounds kind of fucked up but it's like I feel like for some of you guys you're like torturing yourself still like when you don't have to is kind of like and again easier said than done but it's like it's like we got to we gotta get to a good space and we got to make a decision and we got to move forward with this now. Like, I almost feel like Spirit is saying, like, time, enough time. Yeah, look what happened over – look what came – well, look what happened over health. Look what came out over health, mental health. Nine of swords in the reverse. I was That's what I was really feeling. Like, your mind keeps you too trapped. Like, it, it's, a, it's a mental thing. It's like – always hyper vigilant, always on edge, always on anxiety, like always on, you know, I'm getting like a snappy energy too. Like this is a very uncomfortable energy to be in. It's like full body tension energy, like tense when you don't even know you're tense, clenching your jaw when you don't even know you're clenching your jaw. Like grinding your teeth when you don't know you're grinding your teeth, biting your nails when you don't know you're biting your nails. Like it's that something, someone has got you on edge like this. And your fear is letting this go, which is interesting. Whoever, whatever energy has you on edge like this, whether it's past or present, you gotta, you gotta let it go. Um, some of you guys don't see the damage that this, what this is doing to you. So let me say it to you like this, two of swords, five of wands. For those of you guys where you're at a current 
battle with other people or another person, you are not seeing what damage this conflict is doing to you mentally, which mentally is going to then what affect your physical health, same like emotional would, right? Others of you guys, this is conflict within you about past sh issues with other people that are taking up space in your mind, what I say in the um, what's the vibe portion, living way too rent free in your head, that is causing you to kind of self sabotage any future pleasure, seven of swords in the reverse for yourself and for your life. Whatever happened here or is happening here that has you at odds with other people, again, past or present, it's a lesson with the Hierophant energy around you becoming the Empress, right? It's conditioning in a way. And I think I've talked about this energy of conditioning before, but it's like, you know, through adversity, through overcoming fear, through, you know, energies of acceptance and empathy, all these higher vibrational energies and emotions and feelings and, you know, um, what have you, you become, you know, a more grown and evolved version of yourself. Well, when you get into Empress energy, there is nobody above that. A lot of what you guys have went through was a balancing out, was a conditioning for you to step in a higher role, uh, for yourself and if you're in, in in your life and at the bottom of the deck you guys have temperance so it's kind of like this adversity uh, as imbalanced and unhappy and difficult as it has been is kind of like making you who you are and I know we hear you know this you know stuff kind of like corny and like yeah that thing that shit made me who I am nobody wants to hear that when they're in the middle of it <clears throat> but that's the reality of the situation where you've been at odds with other people or yourself. It's time to let that go now um, because it's just perpetuating a cycle of self-torture, self-sabotage. It's not helping your mental health, which is not helping your physical health. And it's time to really kind of ground out this mental energy. And anytime I see ground out, I'm always thinking like overthinking or over, over emotional, right? And um, over emotional and overthinking is not like, oh, you're an overthinker, you suck, or oh, you're too emotional and narcissistic, right? Like, but it's more of saying, like, um, out of balance, right? Out of balance, something is in overdrive. And anytime anything is in overdrive, too, right? Too much of anything can, can kill you. Too much water can kill you. We need water to live, but it can also kill us if we have too much. We can drown in water, right? Um, but it's that kind of energy. It's like that overthinking puts your body into overdrive. Now we have health issues. That letting your emotions drive over emotional. Uh, now, now there's too much of it. We don't know what to do with it. Now we have health issues, right? Um, this energy that you're hold that anxiety energy that you're holding on to from these situations not being able to accept that they have transpired, holding on to the past is blocking your path to a wand in the reverse, right? It's like ground it out, put on your empathy suit, make a decision, do what you need to do, choose that path, move away from that person, rectify that situation. It's like do what needs to be done. No fear, all strength, all confidence. So you can move forward with your life already is what I want to say. Yeah. Move forward with your life. Boom. Yeah. And out of conflict too. I think that's the most important part to note here. World energy shows the completion of a cycle. It shows achievement, success. It's like graduation day. Seven of wands is an energy of um, it's defense. It's protecting your energy. But the way that I'm looking at this is like it, like, getting out of the, like, how do I say this in a way that is not like kindergartner speech? Um, the conflict is pushing you out the door because you're no longer entertaining the conflict. Like, you're no longer going to that place of internal conflicts. You're no longer being at war with yourself. You're no longer dealing with people that all they do is bring drama and conflict. Like you're accepting people in situations for what they are. And like, you're not trying to play more into it or you're not trying to look deeper into it. You're just like letting it be what it is and you're letting it go. And it's bringing a lot of healing to you. 
uh, with the three of swords in the reverse and it's moving you out of an energy where you were bored and complacent and like not fulfilled and just not even really happy and you're just like not going to go there anymore is what I'm hearing. You're not going to go there anymore. You're just going to have empathy, see people for who they are, where they are, leave them where they're at, and you're just not going to tolerate it. You're going to leave them where where they're at if it's going to continue to affect your health, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, because you're going to go off to be the empress. Empress can't hold on to all of this shit. Empress can't, you know, perpetuate cycles of self-sabotage. Empress can't, you know, Empress has shit to do. She got things to make happen. And that's the energy you're moving into by moving away from anyone or anything that has bring that has brought or is bringing conflict, drama, just tension to your life. Once you realize, because like I said, a lot of you guys, it's subconscious. You don't even know you're having anxiety all the time. You don't even know you're clenching your jaw and biting your nails and pulling out your hair and, you know, picking at your skin and like all of these like anxiety type of energies. You don't even know you're doing these types of things. You don't even realize how tense your body is until after you get away from or let go of that conflict between you and this person or these people. I feel like some of you guys are have been afraid to like have been afraid to accept people and situations for what they are or what they were because that means like, you know, you will feel like you will not be happy emotionally or that you will have to be alone emotionally. But kind of like the title of this week says, um, uh, you know, better to walk alone than to uh, walk with people who are walking in the wrong direction. And I really feel like that's the message for you guys. Like where before you may have been sad about like, oh, I don't want to lose this person or I can't accept that me and this person are, you know, no longer together, or no longer friends or, uh, you know, I have to keep my distance or my space from this family or whatever. You're kind of making peace with that in a way this week because it's like, what good is this? It's only hurting me to like hold on to this. Um, and I'm already bored and I want different things and, you know, I want different experiences and I don't want to fight all the time and I don't want to always be on edge and uncertain and unknowing. Like, I don't want to feel yucky anymore. I want to feel good. So it's like, I'm going to let this go. I'm going to fucking do what I need to do, make a grounded, logical decision. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to get moving and I'm not going to let fear stop me. And it's going, and I'm just going to have this energy of acceptance that this is who they are and this is what it is. And this is what happens happened and this is what is happening and I just need to move forward with my life so I can do other things and not have to feel like this all the time and that's what I'm going to do and that's the energy that you guys are moving into this week or at least that's the energy you're being called to move into uh, so good luck with that right but um, that's what I have for you guys thank you so much for joining me today if y'all need anything in the meantime between time y'all know where to find me but other than that I will talk to you soon take care